Welcome, welcome, and we are back hey. to another episode of the Squeeze Pod. This is your host, Juice, here with my man Daniel hey, and Samba you Grills. No, what's good, world? So, <laughs> my man Daniel, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where you come from? What uh, what made you start uh, Samba Grills? And you know, just give us a little backstory. Okay, what do you mean where I came from? Are you talking about like where I was born? Yeah, where you okay. were born. We <laughs> okay, want to know right. you. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, I was born in Chevrolet, Maryland. Okay, PG. Woo woo. Um, I am now staying in Beltsville, Maryland. Okay, went to High Point High School. Woo woo. Home of the Eagles. What's good? You already know. So, um, graduated in 2010. Um, yes, class of 10. There we go. Okay, so how I started Somber Girls. It started. What was that holiday? It was Memorial Day, I remember, okay? It was Memorial Day. One of my friends, she was having a cookout, and she wanted me to grill. Well, not really wanted me to grill. I kind of, like, offered to grill. I wanted to show off, okay, because I knew how to make these bomb, bomb as lamb chops, okay? Very good. So I wanted to introduce my lamb chops to the people that were going to be at the cookout. I, I just want to stop you for a second. Them lamb chops. Fire! You already know. Okay, I recently had a birthday party and them lamb chops was gone. So In minutes. Lamb, you were there. You were my witness. So you already know um, with how I do my thing with the lamb chops. So I wanted to introduce the lamb chops to the people that were going to be at the cookout. So I ended up getting my turn I already saw that there was an uncle on there okay now most of the people that I cater to are Africans okay I love my I love my people I love them okay but sometimes we we get a little crazy when it comes to the meat okay? oh what happens give your people worry, a little story we, we I will give you a story don't worry but let me finish okay, okay. so I saw uncle he was doing the grill he, he ended up seeing me and he was like okay you know it's your turn I said, okay, bet. It's my turn to do my thing. I'm putting my lamb chops on there. I already have my sauce. They're already sauced up. But, you know, when it comes to lamb chops, I want them to be nice and soft. I want them to be tender. I kind of want them to melt in your mouth, okay? That kind of thing. I want the meat to be falling off the bone. I want you to be sucking on the bone. No homo. I'm so sorry, but that's... I want it to be that good, okay? <laughs> I needed it. I need the, the food to be that good. Okay, so that's why I want people to like try it. So I ended up doing my thing, and people are coming to me and like, oh, you know, you're doing such a great job. You know, you should do this as a business. Mind you, Samba Grills wasn't even in the works. Like, I, was, I, so I wasn't even thinking about that. So when people just kept coming to me, and I'm just like, oh no, because. It's one thing to grill, and then another thing to grill in the heat. And then on top of that, you grilling with a whole bunch of Africans in your face. Ask so it's some like, questions. when is the meat going to be done? Is this done? Is there more lamb? Is there only chicken? Dang, like, can I finish working? You know, it's just a lot. But I didn't get any of that at that particular um, time. Time mm -hmm. when I started doing summer girls, I really didn't get any body at that cookout, you know, grilling me honestly when about the meat. So when the meat was finally done, everybody was like, Oh my gosh, this meat is so good, you know, tender. I even had someone who was a vegetarian try my meat. So they went back on their word. They went back on their word. <laughs> uh, maybe there wasn't a true vegetarian, maybe. But she tried it, and she was like, yeah, no, th this is good. She was in. She was in. I don't think she's a vegetarian at this time now. So <laughs> <laughs> so does she still order from you? Um, I, she does ev not order because right now I'm not, I haven't really come out with a menu. Actually, I lied. I have come out with a menu. I haven't really launched a grand opening. Okay. That's what I am trying to do at the moment. Okay, is do a grand opening, really just do some small plate foods and just have people come out and try the different plates that I might have out, which is lamb chops, chicken, beef ribs, and maybe a nice little seafood boil because I've been told that uh, I make a mean good seafood boil, and I do. 
Sadly, I'm allergic, so I won't be able to taste oh, test yes, and tell but anybody. But don't worry. Uh, the same sauce that I use for the seafood grill, I would do it for you with lamb chops. And you, you, I got you. I, I you know. Surely going to be busting. Yes. All right, Dan. What was a moment of doubt that you had in the business or something that was a, a trial that you had to overcome? I think the most thing I doubted was me trying to see if I'm going to get customers. Okay. I was, that was my thing, especially during the summer, because that's where I feel like that was where I was actually getting most business. But every time I would start, I was a little bit afraid and I was a little bit doubtful about how many people I would be bringing. And I'm always trying to bring new customers, not only the African population, I'm also trying to bring most of my American people, other people from other ethnicities, and try to just see, like, what they like, exactly what I'm being told and what's expected of me, and just try to just do my best. And honestly, consistently, consistency is key, okay? Because if you're not consistent, you will fail. You'll just, like, keep, like, going back into the same routine and you kind of like can't go back to that same routine because you're not going to see different results. You kind of have to do something different to see different results at the end. And that's kind of one thing that I'm learning because I want to be able to kind of broadcast my business and advertise and just, and I'm not good at that. Okay. Like, you know, the whole TikTok thing, you know, Instagram, but I'm starting to learn I have started to come across some apps that will help you, you know, just transform your videos and be like, bam, okay, there you go. Just do it. You know, you got something and just, just start advertising and be just, just being consistent, you know, and just not failing at all. You know, that's it. And I was going to say, well, if you definitely you watch the page here, uh, we definitely talk about some of the AIs and stuff that will help you to maximize your creativity Okay. on top of that. Um, you know, we will definitely love to help you to uh, broadcast your business yes. out here. And later on in the episode, we're going to be talking about an accountability session okay. with you here. So that way we'll be seeing what you have to offer coming okay. up soon. OK, I'm down for it. I'm All down right. for it. I mean, I already know I sent you the videos, so it's going to be lit. Oh, my God, I'm excited. And I sent you some good videos. The lamb chops are in there, y'all. Peep the lamb chops. You're going. It's like, yeah. That's it. I mean, the work speaks for itself. Juice, juice knows. No, I definitely do know. But yeah. we're gonna have to when we get you back on. We're gonna have to bring you with a play to something. You're gonna have to show, oh show and tell. Yes. You know, it okay. can't be just. I can do that. Yeah, and matter of fact, we'll try to have a panel so we'll have people tell oh you what it's like. You know, yes, we'll have all their Ooh. faces, first time reactions, and everything yes. like that. That is good because not a lot of people like lamb. They're like, what is that? What What is that? And it's like, is that pork? I'm like, it's definitely not pork. Okay, like it's kind of like in the beef family, I would say. Yeah, in the beef family, far from pork. I would say, what made you lean towards lamb as your key meat? Nobody does lamb. Everybody's doing fucking chicken. (laughs) And I'm tired of it. Okay, chicken, chicken wings, legs, thighs. I mean, I be, I, I would have a lot of Africans come to me. A lot of African organizations, they want me to grill for their organizations because, you know, sometimes they probably have reached a milestone, you know, 15 years of them being together. So they want to do something during the summer. Cool. Right. They bring me like two boxes of chicken. And I'm talking about these are huge steroid chicken legs. Like, excuse me, what do you expect me to do with this? Okay, it's going to take me at least two hours for one of these chickens to cook. Like, it's a lot. But I do it Mm -hmm. in the heat. Okay. (laughs) So that's why I I charge about $65 to $75, maybe $85 per hour. And it's not because I I want to be mean or I'm doing it for the money. You got to look at the work. Like, I'm getting up out of my time. I'm seasoning the meat that you're not seasoning. I'm using my seasonings, okay, that are coming out of my pocket in my kitchen. 
Okay. Then I'm getting charcoal. Then I'm bringing my grill. And I'm usually sometimes trying to get help. So I also got to pay for that help. And that's coming out of my pocket. So that's why I sometimes charge that much, you know. And some people are like, oh, Danielle, I don't know. Can we do $50? I'm like, auntie, $50? I ain't trying to do that. I've already charged you a $50 deposit. And then you're going to take that deposit out of your total. Girl, I'm going to leave with nothing. So, yeah, $65. Well, it definitely sounds like you got to change your business style because it, it's not being mean. If the work uh, works for itself, like if it's proof in the work, and it definitely is, you 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 can definitely up your prices and not feel bad. Right. What I would say, though, as well, like you were saying earlier, and I definitely want to hope, I mean, definitely want to help you mm -hmm. to uh, create more content. Content is king as well. So as more content you put out with the grill yes. and stuff, the more advertisement you kind of get, the more people you can reach out to, and you can generate a little wealth on the side with that as passive income. Yes, and I think other people will actually appreciate that I'm doing this, and they won't even look at the money. They're like, I, I do it because I love it. Kind of that... The next person doesn't want to do it. So, yeah, I'm going to, that, I feel like that's easy money for the summer, you know? So then I, I think it also comes back to the whole doubt thing because after the summer, it's like, now what do I do? Okay, I do have a career in nursing. Woo woo. Congratulations. So, but I also would like to do, you know, I work Monday through Friday. So over the weekend, I kind of want to do like a grand opening where I am having people come and order food. I will let I will take orders during the week, Monday through Friday, and from Saturday and Sunday, that's when I'm cooking your meals, and you should be able to be able to come pick it up, pick it up, or I'm delivering, and yes, I will be charging a delivery fee because gas ain't cheap. It goes to two ninety nine to three nineteen. It's not exp it's not cheap. As you should, as you and should. Like those people who live in Baltimore, <laughs> yes, twenty five dollars on top of your food. Okay. It's it's. <laughs> I mean, and you're gonna get some delicious meal. Not just Baltimore, meal. Virginia too. Okay, y'all far. I was about to say okay. Uber Eats is not taking you these kind of meals. And and see, and that's another thing because I'm also trying to get in into the whole Uber Eats and DoorDash to also do that because that also helps. Okay, so when people are like, "Oh, you know, where can I get your food?" Oh, you can see that thing off Uber Eats, DoorDash. I'm on there. You know, I kind of want to be that African cuisine that is open at night, like after people are going to the club. And after that, people are are hot, hungry, high. So I got two questions, but we're going to stay on track because I was about to get off track for one moment. Okay. Who were some of the influential figures for you um as, as far as starting the business and growing and w what is some of the wisdom that they imparted onto you to help you grow? Oh, that's a good one. My mom, when she saw that I was doing this business, she definitely encouraged me. She encouraged me on one to do it because she knows how I am with my temper. Now I, I don't have a bad temper. Don't get me wrong, but when it comes to, one, you're grilling in the heat, and then on top of that, you got people, are, is this done, is this done? And sometimes that kind of, like, is draining. So I kind of, like, have to draw back and then be like, ma'am, the food is going to be done. Because one thing about me, I don't serve at the grill. When I'm cooking, I need my attention to be on the grill. I'm not serving at the grill with your plate in my face, like, oh, can you please? I want chicken. Like, Relax. When the chicken is done, I'm going to put the pan over there, and that's where everybody can get their chicken. But I'm not going to have you in my face with your plate, you know, doing this. Because if you're going to be doing that, you need to be tipping me in my jar. <laughs> because you're not going to be standing around all eyes on me. It's already heat. Mm -hmm. And then I feel the heat from your eyes beaming down my neck. It's not, no. I, I just feel like that's a lot. So my mom has always taught me to like, calm down. She always taught me to hydrate. And then she's like, charge them. Because right now it's only me. Sometimes she will help me. You know, not out in the field, but, you know, she, the pre-cooking. Because sometimes I noticed that when you put raw meat on the grill, it takes longer to cook. Mm -hmm. 
So I kind of like started pre-cooking the meat and I've always told people to start pre-cooking their meat because if you don't pre-cook your meat, I'm going to charge you more because that's more work for me, more charcoal that I have to get now and I have to now spend more to make sure that your food is actually fully cooked. And I think you, I have to be compensated for that. So I definitely, so definitely you know, money is one thing that I should definitely be charging them and making sure that I am charging them right and not like trying to like get over on them, which I'm not. I'm really not. I, I think that I charge within a good amount, you know. So I was going to say, no, definitely. We, we need to uh, support our brother here. If you have yes. a uh, cash app, we're going to plug it into the description there. Oh, yeah. If you yes, have I been you. a customer of Samba Grills at any point in time, please donate. If you have not, support this brother here because the food is absolutely amazing. Yes. And at some point, you will taste it and have your socks knocked off. So in the future for Samba Grills, I am definitely trying to get a food truck. I was just gonna okay. ask about that. Oh, you were? Yeah, I was. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'd be it's jumping okay. the gun. It's no, it's okay. And I was gonna ask you about it because you were saying the after the nightlife stuff. But it sounds like you need to go ahead and get you that that truck. Yeah. Because then you be mobile and you can, you know, hit yes. up those areas where the the hot and heavy, hot and ready people are I at. I feel like that's where it will make it a little bit much easier for me to definitely cook at the event. And then bring it all there. And then usually, because a lot of people bring, I'm like, like I said, two boxes of meat. It will be chicken and chicken legs, chicken wings, and whatever goat meat, lamb, salmon, fish, whatever it is. So it, it, it's a lot. Okay. And then sometimes I'm only have, only have my one grill, big grill, and then I will have the park grill or something like that. So. Then you have the little park grill. So, you know, and then the park grill, it, it doesn't really do much as how my grill is doing. So, this this summer, I do plan on getting, like, two grills. So, then that way it makes the work so much better. And I will still be able to use those park grills, maybe for hot dogs and hamburgers. Because I, I see a lot where I usually have to come early. So, then that way I'm cooking most of the food. And then not everybody's waiting. So, like, when once the chicken is finished, I'm doing whatever other meat that you might have. And then usually I will have the hot dogs and hamburgers. Kind of like I will serve. That's the kind of, the only food that I will really serve from my grill because I feel like it needs to be hot. So, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I kind of want my the burgers and the cheeseburgers, hot dogs, to be hot So some people I will come with their bread Already ready And all I gotta do Is just Slap it put, on there Put it on there Well how long does it take Each meat to be prepared So that that way If anybody's gonna be At the Samba Grill They're not on your neck Hovering So they already have A little idea Of what to wait for Okay so If it's pre-cooked You're only waiting 15-20 minutes tops Cause usually In that 20 minutes I'm either Saucing and seasoning, just doing the last finishing touches, the mwah. So then that way you come back Kiss. for more. So so that's what usually it is. So 15, 20 minutes. Now, if it's a raw meat that you're literally just bringing to me, okay, then it is going to take longer. It might take an hour, hour 20 minutes, you know, because that's on the grill. It's not like I can put it in the oven, then come out and put it on the grill, because that's usually sometimes what I do. Or I just steam some of the chicken, and it's just easier that way. So that's why I always tell people, like, pre-cook your meat. Just pre-cook it, because it's, it's just much better that way. And then even if, like, if you want me to do it, then, of course, I'm going to charge you, you know, because I'm going to have to pre-cook it. I'm going to have to season it, you know, and whatever you really want. I will do for you. And that's not a problem. Nope. And I hope you guys have been liking my boy Daniel's energy. If you have, please hit that like button yes. because guess what? It's free for you and YouTube rewards you with, guess what? Fireworks. Hit and hit the subscribe button if you like the channel. Yep. Uh, let's get back into it, though. Can you describe for us a moment you felt that uh, you moved from the familiar to the unknown? And what are the changes you encountered? Chiefs, you these questions. Okay. Repeat the question again. Okay, so can you describe for us um, a moment that you went, so throughout uh, building Sombra Grills, uh -huh. you went from, so, any moment that you went from something that was like 
what you were familiar with doing and something that may have changed and made you feel like, okay, well, I'm in an unknown realm now. And how did you encounter it? So with grilling, it really came because I was always grilling. Okay. Like anybody who would ask me if I'm at any event, and this was like way before Samba Girls, they're like, oh, yeah, can you help grill? Or this auntie would be like, oh, Danielle, can you help grill? I'll give you $20 or whatever. You know, I'll do it. But it wasn't till I got to the certain cookout and I wanted to, like, show off, okay, the lamb chops that I had, until it's like I started becoming really familiar with what I was doing. And it really didn't, it honestly, it didn't come unknown to me, there were some things that were unknown in the business that I that I started becoming familiar, like how to clean off the grates off the grill. You know, I didn't know that you can use an onion, a raw onion. You can just literally rub it on there and it cleans off the grill. And it really does clean off the grill, the grill grates very well. You know, so then that way, because sometimes I don't put, actually not even sometimes, I don't put aluminum foil on my grates at all. I feel like the aluminum foil fucks up the work okay and usually sometimes people want to see those grill marks you don't see those grill marks really when you have aluminum foil on your grates so usually i make sure that my grates are always cleaned always onion down and it kind of like gives your meat flavor when you start to do that so the meat is not even getting stuck onto the grates when you do that but I still spray a little something, something, you know, just in case, you know, there's no, there's no problem with being too careful. Okay. So I always like spray a little oil and just make sure, Hey, you know, let me just make sure like everything is good. And I just want everything to be okay and not burn. <laughs> That's the most important. We don't want no uh, crispy, crispy cream. We don't I've, had, I've had that. And I, and usually because of the, distractions around that's why i try to limit the distractions and tell people don't come around to the grill to distract me because i kind of don't want the food to burn i want the food to be the temperature to be good i want the food to be fully cooked and i just don't want people rushing me so that's why i make sure the distractions around nobody's around eliminated it yeah i tried to eliminate the distractions yes Um, what is it that keeps you motivated on your journey to keep samba grills going one thing money cheddar ching the money but the most important thing is to keep everyone i I like that (laughs) to keep everyone happy one thing about samba grills is it's not just to come and grill i kind of like to feel the vibe i want to have fun I might be cooking, but when they're singing happy birthday, best believe I'm the loudest one. When they're saying hip, hip, hooray, I'm the loudest one. That's the kind of energy I bring to the table. And sometimes that's just who I am. It's just natural and I can't force it. I was going to say, yeah, you might want to um, add on to your repertoire that you're a hype man as well, because I've seen it at several events myself. Several events. You know. <laughs> Jeez, you know. He, he's been the, uh, what is it, the, the maestro. The MC, MC in Aruba. <laughs> yes. That was for my girl's 30th birthday. I was lit. And I had everybody. Juice, you were there. I, was I there. had everybody lit at that place. Shout out to the cooks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to the cooks. How did you deal with inevitable change, like your life changing from not being just regular Daniel, but being Daniel of Samba Grills? It was, it's, it's, I think it's, I don't have, it's not like it's a bad thing because now my family's like, oh yes, Daniel's going to cook, you know? So it's like, dang, before Samba Grills, ain't nobody asked me to cook. <laughs> so now all this, now all of a sudden Daniel got a business. Oh yeah, Daniel's going to cook. You know, oh, yeah, Daniel, can you do this for me? Oh, yeah, Daniel's going to do chicken wings. Oh, he's going to do the lamb. You know, it's just like, dang, okay. But I kind of like that because I still, now everybody kind of knows who Samba Grills is and who I am, who Daniel is, and then it also comes with Samba Grills. Mm -hmm. You know, so now people see Daniel and Samba Grills in the same person, in the same energy. So I like that. I actually do like that sometimes, you know, some, it gets annoying, 
I'm not gonna lie. It's like um, I'm still Daniel without Somber Girls, and sometimes I just don't want to cook. You know, I just want to come and have fun. So sometimes when it when I know I'm doing like friends events, I will make sure that the meat is definitely pre cooked before I even step foot in my friend's house. The meat is like on the grill because I want to. Ha- I want to be able to have fun. Mm-hmm. Enjoy. Okay, yourself. I just re- you know like for one of my friends, I can mention names. Yeah, they're not children. No, they're not kids. <laughs> that lady, that girl, old as fuck. Okay, <laughs> Ethel. You know, I have done several little events for her. You know, you, it was a, a that was a wild year. Oh my god, but she had like year? three events yeah, in three one year. Three major events. Okay. The wedding, the Her wedding, gender gender reveal, reveal. and baby shower. <laughs> baby boy is drained. Yeah. That's me. I'm baby boy. Not her baby boy. It's me. Okay, you know, I was drained. But it was fun yes. because I cooked. Her 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 her, fian- her husband now had you know Get it correct because you were gonna say fiance. I was gonna say fiance. <laughs> you, was to, you was about to be in the past. We 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 2024 her now. Fian- her, her her husband, okay. Had hit me up and was like, oh, yeah, you know, I want you to plan this engagement party. I was excited because I was like, yes, I was the one. I was the one planning this. Like, it's my, me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Got the food. The food, I mean, the food was what was the most important thing because I definitely wanted everybody to enjoy. One thing is I'm going to throw down. So I had, I had like, what I think it was... Barbecued meatballs, some mm-hmm. chicken. I think I had lamb, and then some seafood and mac and cheese, some rice, some other things. Okay, so th- it was that, and then there was the gender reveal. I I made sure that because I was planning that. I mean, I had help for the gender reveal, but I was also like, I, I felt like most of the work was kind of like a little bit on me, so I had to like pull up my weight more. You know, I was doing more of the cooking because I was grilling. Mm-hmm. So I had to grill. I had to be there on time. I was also setting up, you know, decorations. I was doing that. So I'm I'm playing two different hats at yeah, this moment. Like five roles. Five man. roles in one body. Okay. So I'm just like, dang. But it was still fun. I had a great time. I made sure that the, all the food was cooked. So then that way I was able to enjoy the event. So that's mainly the kind of thing that I try to do, especially when it comes to friends events, which when when somebody hook tells me, Oh yeah, Daniel, can you grill for me? I know I want to have a good time, but I also want to make sure that my friend is good. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still gonna charge you, but you know. <laughs> no, he wanna have his good time too. But exactly. I, I just want you to know that event, the food was definitely fire. <laughs> For sure, but at the same time, the only issue I had was that damn low hanging chandelier y'all got in that house. Y'all need to move that up <laughs> because it's only for five Everybody foot one. Everybody was, was getting hit. Was with killing that people in oh that my place. God. It was very ridiculous. It's but it so was fun. <laughs> unruly. Oh my gosh, the vibes. Were, you know the vibes. You know, <laughs> I, I love good energy, and that's what I try to portray when I step into the room. I try to. Put Portray good energy. I always come with good energy, um, unless you come at me with bad energy, and then uh, I come at you with bad energy, and that's just how it is. You know, I kind of like go based off your energy and the vibes. I always come with good vibes. I, my intentions are always good. Sometimes, even with my good intentions, some people might look at it as bad. But once they get to know me, they're like, "Oh no, Daniel, he a cool, he a cool nigga, he a cool gay nigga," you know, and I. <laughs> I want to be that person, you yes. know. No, I mean, don't call me the cool gay nigga, but <laughs> no, no, I just, can do that. Just but Daniel, just, just Daniel. Daniel. I want you to see me as me, right. you know, not see me as what I am or who I am or who I sleep with or whatever. Oh, know, well, definitely that. Matter. Well, since you talked about it, you want to give them a little bit like age, uh, orientation, relationship status. Um. Okay, I am thirty-one. I am a Scorpio. I just saw, I recently just saw this, and I, I guess it was an interview, but he was doing it on the street, and of what Zodiac sign, nope, that you would not date. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them niggas were saying Scorpio. So I was like, dang, what did we do? There, And some people were like, no, we're too much, we're too emotional, we, we think about ourselves, and that's not true, you know. I think about the, the person that I'm with, 
you know, so that's not true. <laughs> but um, but yes, I am gay. I am in a relationship. Congratulations. Okay. I'm not going to mention his name because it's none of y'all business. Yeah, stay the fuck out Let of here. Um, but yeah, we've been rocking for seven months. He's also a Scorpio. A lot of people are like, oh my God, how do you do that? And it's so funny because he's like my third Scorpio that I'm dating. Oh my God. Why? But it's like, it was, it's fun. It's, it's, it is fun. And I see a lot of myself in him. So it's like we do things together and it's like we e- complete each other's sentences, which I was, which is very weird and gives me chills. Okay, let me tell you, there was one time, okay, I had bought these chips. Okay, it was honey hot chips. Okay, bought it and I said, okay, yeah, basically he's going to try this. He's, he's definitely going to try this. Get into the car. You know, I greet Bay. You know, we talk. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I want you to try these chips, babe. He looked at the chips and he was like, he smiled. I'm like, what? He goes in the back, grabs the same bag of chips that I just had, that I got. And I'm like, wait, no. And he's like, yeah, I want you to try these chips. And I'm like, wow. That's kind of like was really weird to the point where it keep, it gave me chills, but it was like good chills. I was like, oh, my God, I can, I can actually be myself around this person. So it's it's cool. It's fun. Well, see, now you're touching on another basis of this podcast. So let's talk about this relationship just a little bit, and I'm okay. gonna get back on the I'm not gonna grills. give you much. No, no, we're not asking too deeply onto the. Okay, hold on. We gotta pause. Okay. So, uh, could you tell me about some uh, relationships? Excuse me, I have to restart it. Mm-hmm. Tell me about some relationships that have been crucial for your growth with Samba Grills, and how have they affected you? You have some friends. That usually take advantage of the business. And those are people that are not your number one supporters. They're like, oh, yeah, I'll pay you back when I get the money. Or, no, you're going to pay me back now. Or I'm not coming to your business. Okay. 100%. Like, I am I just feel like you have some people that try, not even friends. You know, you even have family sometimes. You know, not saying that I do, but in general, you do. Mm-hmm. Some people... We're trying to take advantage of your business and say, you know, you can do this for free for me because, you know, we're cool like that or you're my family. Yeah, you know me. And I'm like, how about you support me? Of course. You know, and that's what I like. You know, you have some people that will really come out and support. And there was this one person that hooked that um one that booked me and was like, you know what, Daniel, I want to be able to support you. Don't give me no discount. Like I'm not don't don't discount me, pay me full price. Like I want to pay full price. You know, in in my head, I'm like, girl, I wasn't even going to give you a discount, but you know, like, thank you. <laughs> I really wasn't because you know, I feel like I'm coming when when I do business, I give it my all, and I feel like I should be paid my all. Okay, because I feel like I deserved it. I give my all. I give my energy. I I mean, I'm up there sweating. Okay, for hours, Bullet. hours, bullets. I mean, don't get me wrong; it does not get in the food. Okay, but I sweat bullets, so I think that I should get paid for those bullets, sweat, tears. You know, endless hours, endless fumes, smoke all in my face, and that's what I'm inhaling every day. Okay, so. He's saying he wants he want a little compensation. I want to be compensated smoke, for smoke for the inhalation. smoke, you mm-hmm. know, because sometimes you know that I get dizzy sometimes, you know, and sometimes I do gotta take a break. So I really that's why I always tell people come prepared for you know steamed, prepared you know pre cooked meats because I'm I if I'm on that grill for raw meat, I am going to charge you double maybe not double but you know i'm gonna charge you and that's for fucking sure yes um so let me ask you this so are there any symbols or metaphors or any like quotes that have like driven your business and driven you to keep motivated and how is it that they appear to you one quote that does stick out is (laughs) the early bird catches the worm i know that's an old one but it applies because i have to wake up early to start seasoning 
Usually I season the, the night before because I kind of like want it to be the seasoning to actually get and marinate. And then I get up again and then I have to season and then pre-cook. So I'm doing all of that in the morning. And mind you, your, your event might start around 1, 12 o'clock and I'm up by 6. Right. So the early bird catches the worm and the worm is getting to that money. So, because when I come into your event, I'm ready to grill and I'm ready to show off. Because that's what I do. One thing about Scorpios, we like showing off. Oh, so that so it, I, I was going to ask we you. We like attention. Was the because I thought that you know you were cooking and you wanted to share the love that you had inside, but it's more you showing off that your food is better than everybody else's. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to say everybody else's, but I can throw down my lamb chops is definitely better. I was told uh, it was better than some people. I don't. I'm not going to name any names, but I was told that my lamb chops are the juiciest. It is fresh because it's all halal meat. Okay, I never get it from you know. I'm not saying like some of the Americans who process their meat like is not good. It's just not better than the fresh meat. Like literally, the halal people will bring out the whole lamb, and I will tell them. The part of the lamb that I want, and they're literally cutting it like right in front of you. So it's it's something that I enjoy doing, and I like to get it from certain places that I know that you know the, these halal people they know me now. They're like, oh yeah, you're here to get me. I've, they've given me free seasonings. Like it, it's just great. So I always just try to do different things. So you've enjoyed going out and meeting new butchers and. You know, uh, the experience of shopping around. So I have not done that. Okay. Now, one thing I want to start doing, once the grand opening is official, I definitely want to plug myself into. So one thing I definitely want to start doing once the grand opening is done is pop-ups. I want to be doing pop-ups. I want to be going to different grilling pop-ups. Okay, because I, uh, my friend Ethel, shout out to you, sis. She's been sending me these things, like sending me different pop-ups and things like that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I can do this. You know, if I get the right help, the right person that I know that's going to support me by my side, I can do this. This this is not going to be nothing to me because I already know my food is good. It's just now I got to put bring it out there and and let other people try it. No, that's 100%. And we're going to get you those people. Yes. Anybody down in the comments, y'all looking to get a job with a grill company? Holla yeah. Yes. Um, I, I do want somebody with experience. Okay. So if you have a little bit of grilling just, experience. Just a little grilling experience. If you, if you, if you cooking, better- cooking experience, I'll take two. You know, it's nothing to really train because I, I don't mind training. Okay. You know, because one thing I, w- I do want to do is if I have two events in one day, I want to be able to send you out there and be like, yeah, you going to make that money and I'm going to go over here and make this money. So then, you know, it kind of like I'm not missing the opportunity and Samba Grills is everywhere. And that's kind of what the future is going to be holding. I can't wait. Okay. We're going to be looking forward to it. I'm telling okay. y'all, listen, y'all got to get y'all some plates. From Samba Grills. The beautiful thing about it, too, is this man literally tells you when you get there, get your to-go place ready. Yes. Because if you don't, once it's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> no don't ask back. me. Don't tell me. Do I have any in the back? Because the food that, are in, is, that is in the back is for me, and I'm not sharing. You know, like, once it's out, it's out. And I will let you know. I will do the whole announcement thing. I will let you know, look, this is the last batch of lamb chops. If you know that you got lamb chops, Stick your ass and stay where you are. And if you know that you didn't get lamb chops, bring your ass up here and get some lamb. Because once it's done, it's done. But yeah, that's it for me. For the yeah. Have you had any relationships uh, change on you, uh, evolve or die out? And then have any of your relationships become so important to you that they won't go away? I have. I call her my. Oh, what's that? What's my manager? And the reason why I call her my manager, shout out to Auntie Isa to jump by. Whoop, whoop. She was, she is the person that brings most of my customers. Okay. I ain't going to lie. She advertised now that I have, um, what is it called? My business cards. I will give her a stack of them. And I have people f- calling me random, like out of the, out of the nowhere. Okay. 
just hitting me up talking about oh yeah i heard you girl are you are you free this time are you free this day she is the one that advertises my business the most so i look up to her i love her dearly Thank you so much And I know this summer coming 2024 She's gonna do the same thing That's why I call her my manager Cause she's always giving me that hookup Like always So it's, it's definitely someone that I Can look up to She's always giving me advice She's always telling me the prices That I should probably charge You know Even when I go up a charge She's like She doesn't question it Because she knows the hard work That comes with it She knows what I'm doing So she supports it, and I love her. Well, we definitely got to shout her out. So make sure when you do the next uh, event that she's one of the people up front so we can see oh, I her will. and definitely. shout her out. Um, can you speak on a moment where you were coming from your roots and that you know translated into the business that you have brought into uh, Samba Grills itself? Oh, yes. Okay, so I do come from, Af- from an African background, West Africa, um, Sierra Leone. Okay, whoop okay. whoop, home of the home of the cassava leaf. Okay, yeah. stop playing. The best jello fries. It's not the origin though. It's not the origin. It's not the origin. It's the, the more is the cassava leaf kind of. Okay. You okay. know, the cassava leaf is our best bet. But I mean, our jello fries is also good. So what I brought the African cuisine that I kind of brought to Samba Grills. I I know people love suya. Mm-hmm. Now suya is not. A Sierra Leone thing It's more of a Nigerian thing But so I kind of like took them Took what they Their seasoning And just added a little bit of Sierra Leone Into it You know Especially when it comes to my lamb chops I do suya lamb So when somebody When, when I tell someone And I'm like Oh yeah I'm do, I can do suya lamb Or barbecue They're like wait Suya lamb I never had that Because you know They always do suya with beef you know, they will cut the beef off, cut the beef very, very small, and then grill it or bake it, and then, you know, put the seasoning on there. But that's the same thing I'm doing, but I'm doing it with lamb chops. So they're like, oh, my gosh, that that sounds delicious. So I'm like, yeah. Definitely like, right now. That's, so that's definitely one of the things that I usually do and bring to the table when it comes to summer girls and then bringing, like, the whole African thing to it. So when now when I'm now... Trying to prepare my menu I also want to do a little bit American And I kind of want to add a little African into it as well So, so you, you got that real Afro-American style You know, I'm trying, I'm trying I'm, I, I, I want to cater to all my peoples But I also want you to be It's also good to also try new things You never know So your lamb chops, I mean, it's not spicy It, it has a kick, I'm not going to lie It does have a kick But it's a good kick Okay, as long as you got the right juice, soda, water, you're good. Okay, <laughs> you gotta have a full combo. With as long as, yeah, yeah, as long as you got something to quench your thirst, there the hotness, <laughs> the hotness. But I do want to share an experience. Yeah, of course. If I can, can of, I? Of course you can. Cool. I noticed working with Africans is not easy. I love my people, love them to death. But there, when we, when someone is grilling. Do we really have to be like, oh, is the meat done? Daniel, oh, yes, that meat, you will be, you're going to save that meat for me, right? Okay, Daniel, good, good. And then it's like, most, okay, most of the people that I grill for are like organizations. So there was this one organization that I grilled for. They were a Nigerian organization. Love my people, okay? I'm not Nigerian, but I love y'all. They're a little, they're a little aggressive when it comes to... You know, me being on the grill They're like, oh yes, you're going to be on the grill Okay, yes, you're going to save this meat for me Okay, this goat meat, I want this Okay, or this is for my sister back home Like, wait, are you What about the people that are here? And you talking about the people back home? Like, sis, come on Like, everybody's going to get it Okay, that's why I always Especially, especially in that moment I always tell people I'm not going to serve at the grill because that's when it gets a, too intense, it gets overwhelming, and I'm just like, you got to chill. So those are Nigerians. Then my people, Sierra Leone, I'm like, okay, we worse. Oh, I mean, a lady literally kept asking, oh, is this meat done? And I kept telling her it's not done. She literally took, takes the meat off the grill, and it's not done. And I tell, she's like, well, I can go cook it at home. 
And then she takes it. I'm like, I'm like, wow, okay. And I'm like, I expected not to be mean, but I expected Nigerians to be worse. But it was our people, my people, salon people. And I'm just like, oh my God. Then have the audacity to try to come back and say, oh, it's not cooked. And then try to put it. I said, no, you're taking it home and you're gonna cook it. <laughs> like at that point, I was like, nah, sis, like you you you're doing too much because it's actually like not fair sanitary. to other people. And it's not sanitary. And that was that was it's unhealthy. definitely not sanitary. Yeah, she didn't even care. She took it. And I, and she was like, <sighs> I'm like, yes, <laughs> burn yourself because you're uh, you're not being smart right now. Like you're not being smart, sis. That that's a and it's my people. Like we speak the same. Well, I don't speak that language, but I understand that same language. Mm-hmm. My mom speaks. My mom speaks that language. So I'm just like, oh my god, these are my people, and this is how they're acting. Mm. Goes to show, but it, but hey, I'll still serve you. Okay, <laughs> the money. <laughs> As long as the money's right, that's say, as long as it's still time green. is money. Okay. <laughs> no, but I mean that that's an that's an experience for the books for sure. Oh my gosh! Yes. I would just say though, it, it's not Africans in general. It's just you know certain people have a, a little extra care that they need. You know. No, you, you're right. Uh, it's just that it's just that some of the people that I have encountered are mostly African, and I am always willing to like branch out. And just, I, I I want to start cooking for some Caucasians. I want some of them to try my food. He want to go. To, he wants to go to an all white party, y'all. So oh my god! If you have an I'm all trying, white party, and please. If you're in Bethesda, me. Rockville area, yes, I I, I will come out there. I, I'm gonna actually get you on with. Um, I'm gonna have some other people of different type of ethnicities oh, yes, I like on that. so that hopefully you can advertise and maybe that'll be the, the episode you come back on but we're gonna have uh this coming up we got two more so i got three more questions for you okay. and we're gonna have that accountability session at the third one okay okay but right here right now and you just talked about a moment like this but I, I maybe you have another one but could you let us know a moment you had to reflect on a crisis or or a major event that had a setback, and how did it shape your resilience? Like, how did it make you stronger in the efforts that you're moving for Samba Grills? So there was a little situation where after I grilled, I think I was trying to leave, and there was cars are going this way. You can go this way, and the opposite side, the cars are going the opposite direction. And I noticed that the car in front of me and the car that was coming, we're having a conversation. And I'm ready to go. Like, I'm tired. I'm, I'm, it's summertime. It's still nighttime, but I'm hot. So I, I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to feel that cool air because at that time, my AC was not working. Okay. So, so like, I'm ready to feel the cool air. Okay. And these people are, like, literally talking. So I'm like, I beat my horn. And still nobody is, like, moving. So I'm like, wait, are these people deaf? Like, are they not, like, are they, like, not ignoring me? So, and and I ended up, like, kind of, like, getting a little aggressive. I was drinking a little bit. So I kind of I kind of got a little aggressive. And I was like, hello, beep, beep. And, you know, I, like, I started, like, literally getting aggressive behind the... the laid the, on the, the horn. Yes. Okay. And then that's when the guy's like, oh, you're being rude, this, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, how am I being rude? I'm ready to leave. And you guys are literally blocking the driveway. Like, just kind of like move out the way and then have your conversation. Just let me leave, you know? So then another a person, I guess, knew the person that was in that car and started getting loud with me and stuff like that and wanted to come basically fight. Because that's the energy he was giving. So, you know, I gave that energy same that same energy back. And one thing is, I did not want to do that because one, I was still even if the business even if even though I was done with my business, I was still representing Samba Grills. So I was like, damn. Like I actually came back home and I regretted doing that. So I was like, uh like I I, I was I was I kept saying to myself that like, I could have done that better. You know, like I could have done that better, but I ended up doing that in the negative way. So that's so that moment I said to myself that, you know what, I'm going to not try to get angry when it comes to like that, that that was nothing. Okay, I could have definitely 
done something different and changed my action. But instead, that person's actions made me react, and that's why I reacted the way I did. You know, I reacted like I wanted to fight, and honestly, I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. But when you, if you take me there, I, I'll go there. I'll scrap. I haven't scrapped since high school, but I will scrap. But... I, I, I just felt as if that in that moment it wasn't the time nor the place. And like I said, I'm representing Samba Grill. So I should have been more careful. And now, like, moving forward, I will be. I was about to say, that's absolutely powerful because a lot of people nowadays, they are very quick to just let their emotions fly. Yes. And not really <laughs> yes. think about the repercussions of their actions. Yeah. So I'm glad that you took a moment to, you know, Think about that you needed to represent your company because if those people were future uh, customers, then what would you have done then? Exactly. So it's like, oh, is that how he acts? So that's why sometimes I just like try to like what? really not react to people's actions because not everybody is doing try to do bad. You know, their intentions are good. You know, or sometimes their intentions, they just, there's just no intentions. It's just all actions and they're just like, not, there's nothing really okay. connecting up here. So when it comes to them doing the action, they're not really thinking before doing the action. And a lot of people do that. It's, it's just a human nature thing. You know, we, a lot of people act before thinking and we end up thinking about, oh, I wish I did this differently. And it's kind of like too late from, you know, because you already did the action. Now you made your bed. You got to lie in it. Well, that's how you you, you got to get past regret. And I, that's exactly what you're speaking on. Yeah. Um, I would say, but that's that's why you have to do take a moment. And especially when you're feeling emotional about whatever it is you're doing and think about, if you're doing this just out of emotion or if mm. it's something that you know is correct at right, the moment. Right, right. So usually you, you just got to know the time and place to do things and to correct people and hold them accountable for their actions. Because once you do that, you could become the bigger person. 100%. And instead of you acting crazy, you're actually holding them responsibility. You're actually holding them accountable respectfully mm -hmm. instead of in a disrespectful way because then the person is not taking it, you know, how you want it. I kind of learned that the hard way, but I mean, it is what it is. All right. So, I mean, wrapping up a little bit, I, first off, I just want you guys to all go over and please subscribe to this man's Instagram. Oh, He's yes. going to plug it in. Uh, we're going to have it in the description box. Yes, yes. Uh, make sure that you uh, follow him. Uh, shout out, especially, especially hit the donation box for him. Please. Um, and, of course, we would love for you guys to do the same here. Come over, hit the like button, subscribe yes. if you can. Subscribe. Don't Donate a little bit. We have our lovely lady he, secretary here, excuse me, um, and we need to get her some sangria. So hashtag sangrias for sis. Oh, yeah. Send, send down some coins so that she can get her some sangrias. I Birthday like is coming up very soon. Aquarius season. Yes. Shout out. Okay. But Daniel, as you continue to grow on your journey, mm -hmm. can you name us three things that you're going to be doing in the future and how we can find you and see it happen? Okay. Um, three things. One it will be the food truck. Two will be the grand opening. And you got to give us a time frame. So when you going to be Ooh, doing? Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, is, if you going to talk okay, about so it, food, you got to be about the food it. truck. Let me tell you, that's I, I, I should have said that last. Okay? okay, because the food truck going to be is it's going to be some work. The grand opening, I'm definitely trying to do a grand opening this summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's going to be a nice little small little opening. I'm probably going. If since you want timeline, I'm going to do it. I want to do it in the first week of June. Okay. Okay. So that's like kind of like where I am headed. Mm -hmm. First week in June. Okay. So I said, oh, I said my third thing would be the food truck. But I guess I said that first. But the food truck thing is going to be maybe like a year or two. Okay. Well, um, we'll which we're, we're going to try to, sh we're going to shorten gonna that time. Hopefully, it, the, see, the thing is with the food truck. I want to be able to make sure I have clientele so then that way I'm able to pay for the food truck. Okay. So that's kind of like the thing with it. Now, I want to make sure I'm having ongoing clientele, make sure, making sure that I'm having customers. And those same customers are coming to me and, you know, supporting. So 
So That's make sure y'all follow him because he needs the customers because yes. the food is fire. Yes, it is. Just won't lie. Yeah, nah. I don't. I don't like a lot of people's food. You can't yeah. trust in everybody food out here. No, you cannot. Um. So what's um, your? Oh my god, my third one. Thing? Mm, from the business. Um. Just being consistent. So consistency is key. Consistency right? is definitely key. So by um, June, then Daniel, we will be seeing you again or before. Yes. Oh, we will. I'm asking you. Yes, of course. Okay, before so. June, during June, after June, you will see me. <laughs> if you if you guys have been liking Daniel's energy, he also wants to have a panel. So if there's any lovely ladies, any gentleman that wants to have a conversation, debate anything that you've heard him say today, please let me know down in my DMs on Instagram, or you can email us uh, over on the squeeze g uh, at gmail dot com. Yes. Uh, and one last question for the people, Daniel. Can you let us know any words of wisdom or anything that you want to share with the people out there watching today to help them to be the best version of their self? Oh, yes. Um, one thing I learned throughout my 31 years is don't put all your energy into other people and you notice that they're not putting those same people are not putting that energy that you put to them in their lives or whether it's a event, their business, you're putting your 100% all into their lives and they're not doing that same thing to you. And that's one thing I noticed, especially in 2023. Um, I was putting so much energy in a relationship that ended up failing and I wasn't putting that energy into me. I felt like I was pouring into that person and that person wasn't pouring into me. So, yeah, you got to get, I, I kicked rocks. You no, know, well, you kicked rocks and he had to go. So, one thing about it is energy. Put it all into yourself. Don't, it's okay to support your friends. I just feel like don't do overdo it to the point where keep yourself busy because then that's why, no, the reason why is because when you don't keep yourself busy, they're like, Oh yeah, can you help me with this? Or can you help me with that? And then you, you kind of like feel obligated because you know that you're not doing anything. I'm going to help you keep yourself busy and whatever you want, do it, achieve it. Don't give up. Any, st we're going to, everybody's going to have a stumbling block. Okay. Everybody's going to have a depressed moment. It's up to you not to stay in that moment. It's up to you to overcome that moment and turn that moment into an achievement. And it only takes a moment to make some magic. So. But I wanted to say, too, the couple with it, um, instead of pouring in, we got to become as water. Jet Li said this one. Mm -hmm. And if you are the water, people can either flow into you or flow the hell out. <sighs> you know? Oh, I like that. <laughs> you know? Oh, yes. 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 And that, I, I see that. A lot of people do just flow into your life. And if they flow for a season, mm -hmm. they're there for a season and they might swerve they around, flow, they might swerve around, do a little whirlpool and then just swerve out. Mm -hmm. And and then you kind of think like, are those the people that actually benefit my life? And once you start to see that they don't, you ain't going to care. Yeah, you can cut off the wood. You, cut, you just cut that. Cut that yeah. Cut put, that the, put, the, put the stand right there and just damn it up. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, we're done. Definitely. Daniel, I just want to really, really thank you. It has been an amazing episode with you. Yes. You have amazing energy. I hope that thank you guys you. have liked it as well. Daniel, you, uh, if you want to, can you tell them your Instagram or uh, any other way that they can find you? So I'm going to give you my personal Instagram. Can I do it? Personal Instagram? Okay, my personal Instagram is at underscore underscore Isaiah. And I believe I have like about... Three or four H's behind Isaiah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's the only. That's me. I'll okay. try to put it on the screen. For yes. Everybody. So underscore underscore Isaiah with like four H's and then Samba Grills. So S A M B A Grills G R I W -L, L S. Okay. So follow me. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I am not on TikTok yet, yeah, get but once I'm on TikTok, I am on TikTok on my personal TikTok, and I do also advertise on there. So if you ever, I, I've had people book me through TikTok. So sooner or later, I will definitely have a TikTok page for Samba Girls. And I think that's all we got. So it's okay. been a, another episode of The Squeeze. This has been your host, Juice. And... Nice. 
want to say your name? Oh, What's Daniel. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say my last you name. You ain't got to do all of that. Y'all need to but that. peace out, y'all. <laughs> yes. And with that, the 2023 season comes to an end. Good night.